Welcome to Spider-Man Amazing Allies. We're not going to do the disservice of calling it Web of Shadows. Another evening in paradise. Who am I kidding? So this game was released as an alternative to the next-gen Web of Shadows, next-gen being PS3 and Xbox 360 at the time. This one came out for the PS2 and PSP, we're playing the PSP version. And, uh, while I like it a lot, and I don't think it's bad, if you bought this and expected Web of Shadows, you would probably be very pissed. The game features a lot of dialogue and dialogue trees, and most of the dialogue is pretty humorous and spot on with Spider-Man's character and the Marvel Universe in general. There is really no voice acting for said dialogue, though. It helps that the writing is good, then. Talking with this man is just a tutorial for the dialogue. There's uh, nothing remarkable about this uh, particular conversation. But it does give me time to say ahead of time, this game was made on a shoestring budget. Like, the smallest budget. So tiny. So I don't, I don't want you to come in here expecting a lot, but you'll still find a good game underneath the lack of polish. You might have been especially upset if you bought this for the PS2, I imagine, since the PS2 is capable of much greater things than this game. But, I mean, the PS2 was the most popular console at the time still, so... Okay, that incredibly drawn-out conversation is now over. I promise the rest of them are a lot more interesting. We see a lot of Marvel characters in this game, not just from Spider-Man. We have our Spider-Sense, we which we can activate by pressing the L trigger. And it enables us to see objectives or potential uh, civilians that need help. We could actually skip all of the side quests if we really wanted, but the side quests are half the fun. Time for some good old-fashioned wall crawling. Here goes. Walking. On the ground. Oh, what have I been re some dialogue trees come with moral choices. There's the black moral, cho moral choice and the red moral choice. The red one is the heroic one. Most quests are accepted by choosing the red choice. Now, the thing is that we get experience from choosing red and black choices that go toward two separate things. But we'll get to that later. That is the worst looking cat I have ever seen in any video game. There you go, kitty. Ungrateful little furball! Help! Police! I mean, of course we're going to help her, we are Spider-Man. So this game is primarily a beat-em-up, and we have punches and kicks which perform different functions. No need to thank me, ma'am. All in a daze. You know the rest. I'm going, I'm going! I'm pretty sick of being Mr. Nice Guy. I understand some people might really dislike Spidey's voice actor here, but I think he does a pretty good job. A lot of the combat is juggle-focused. If you're playing as Red Spider-Man, I mean. Things change up when you play as a- wait, that's a spoiler. Not a big spoiler, though. You probably saw it coming. We have a lot of power-ups on the top right of the screen. Anyway, the main combo we use as Red Spider-Man is a couple punches that lead into a kick. And the kicks fling enemies forward, like straight forward. Sometimes they will hit other enemies. The numbers that pop out of enemies, those are experience points. Where do these guys keep coming from? This woman right here is a potential quest, but we shouldn't try to help her until we get rid of all the goons up here. I said that the goons give us experience points, but they give us... Well, there are two kinds of experience points. Allow me to explain. The white experience points we get from defeating enemies, those are universal. We use them to buy upgrades. The black and red experience points we get from completing missions and dialogue choices, those are our reputation. And we use the reputation to buy, buy upgrades. It'll make more sense in the upgrade menu, I promise. Just know that the experience points are different. Not all of them are universal. So we don't actually need to defeat these guys before we help the woman. At least I don't think we do. But it's a good idea. Because we need to carry her. 
I also get to show off this glitch where enemies move in slow motion around friendly NPCs. Oh, oops, we triggered the quest. I mean, we came down here to help her, so, you know, we might as well accept. How do you lose your keys on the roof? I'm sorry, let me finish this first. Alright, now we can help you. We press the punch button to carry people. We cannot use our webs while we're carrying people, that's important. All we have to do is get to the top floor. She's complimenting us, so there's no reason to be rude. You know? Okay, now maybe there's a reason to be rude. I mean, she could've just asked for a hug or something. There are people that actually need our help out there. Sorry, lady, but uh, next time please don't lie to superheroes. Bad things might happen. That red symbol we picked up is a health up. It doesn't upgrade our health, it just refills it. These green symbols are power-ups that we get to equip in the upgrade menu between levels. Time for a cutscene. Scaled up J. Jonah's head to match his ego. Come here, Parker. We're giving you a shot at the title. Well, well, if it isn't tall, dark, and tonguey. Alright, yeah, look, Venom. We don't have time to mess around. We know where this is gonna go. Let's just... just get this over with. Venom is our first boss fight, and he's actually pretty tough for our first boss fight. The easiest way to hurt him is to jump and use our punch attack. So we start a combo before we land, and then finish the combo after we land. When the screen fills with black dust, that means Venom is invulnerable and we should stay the hell away. Whatever you do under no circumstance should you run straight up to Venom and try to punch him. Because that will not work. We have the Regenerate power-up selected up in the menu in the top right. What that power-up does is slowly refill our health for a short period of time. You tired? Maybe you should take a nap! This is better than my mid-afternoon nap! Maybe you should shut up! We just activated it, which is why we're glowing green, and why Spidey said two quips there that made no sense together. We're having a lot of trouble getting away from Venom, though. He is very aggressive. We'll still win this, though. We have a lot of power-ups to start with. Something important to note is that these power-ups are one use only. After we use them, they're gone. We'll still collect a lot more across the across the game, though. Please don't knee me in the face while I'm selecting power-ups, Venom. That's very rude. Oh man, I'm gonna die. You think you're so tall, don't you? I summoned the wrong superhero. That is okay. When you summon superheroes, they deal massive amounts of damage to the enemy on screen, even bosses. Where am I? My phone is ringing. Hey, I don't have a cell phone. Hello? Oh hey, it's Nick Fury, as was established during the intro dialogue. We're not exactly the best of friends with Nick Fury. So, uh, he, he must have planted this on us while we were unconscious, which is kind of creepy. Don't, don't do that, man. This, just wait till we're awake, right? So this game's story is a little bit resemblant of the actual Web of Shadows. Not not so much that that it should have had the Web of Shadows subtitle. Just calling it Spider-Man Amazing Allies would have been fine.
I mean, Fury's definitely right. He's not one to judge. Alright, so let's get out of this level and into the upgrades menu. I will probably edit out the upgrades menu most of the time and just tell you what we got during the mission. We have four new power-ups, which we're going to use to replace the ones that we lost during that level. And we're going to use them all in the next one. Hammer hands sounds, uh, sounds pretty great to me. And humorous. Good la- good- good lord, that is a loud beeping sound. Some of these may seem useless, but- useless, but honestly all of them are useful, depending on the context you use them. There are no dud power-ups. Now, well, let's see what all those experience points were for. We have 15 black reputation, which is enough to buy this black power-up, which requires 50 experience. So do you get what the different kinds of experience are for now? Hopefully you do, because that's the that's the best I can do. They put little icons there to help. So I'll see you guys next time for an actual mission.